so that once we take this up, you guys can then, this weekend, take a look at partial variation a little bit. Now, yesterday, direct variation. What was that equation we used for direct variation? It was y equals what yesterday? y equals what, Megan? It was y equals mx. And it looked kind of like this. Well, today, the only difference is that now we have that initial value. So what else do we have to add to this equation to represent a partial variation? What do you think? Jordan? Plus another variable. You could pick whatever variable you want, other than x and y, as well as m, because we've already used it. In most textbooks and in most discussions about partial variation, we usually use B, okay? And that letter is going to be used for this equation, essentially, for the remainder of the year. We are going to use this guy most often, okay? And guess what happens, folks? If I use this equation for a direct variation, will I be wrong? What if I decided, I go, listen, I got this linear relationship. I know it's a direct variation. However, I accidentally pick the equation for a partial variation. Can I still get away with it somehow? Can I still get away with it somehow? Can? <gasps> look at that, folks. If I flip to the next page, look at this. If I go y equals, oops. If I go y equals mx plus b, and I have a direct variation, as long as I sub in 0 for b, I'm still going to get my direct variation because that 0 is going to do nothing. So essentially, if you remember this equation, you're all set, okay? Because b is simply 0 for a direct variation, all right? So b represents what we call the initial value. Okay, some people call it something else. Some people call it the flat rate, kind of like when you guys are renting Beach Grove for your semi-formal, they're going to charge you an initial value or a flat rate to rent the hall. Some people call it the y-intercept, the place where we start on the y-axis. Okay, so those are all the same thing. What's m again, folks, from yesterday? What's m represent? We used it, it's, it's got kind of an ugly long word. It's a something of something, something of something. What is that guy called again? And remember, we're dealing with direct and partial variation. What is that guy called? Oops, I think the door's locked there. Thanks, Sally. What is that guy called? Jordan? Oh, very close. Constant of variation, right? So that's what we call the constant of variation. See you guys. And it looks as though I might not have left a lot of room for you in that box, so I apologize. Now, the only new piece of information that you guys use here or need here before I set you guys free to get your work done is how we can calculate this constant of variation. Remember, yesterday we were going up by ones in the x and the y value would go up by a constant value. How can I always get the constant of variation in a case where maybe my x values, just like I see in this chart, see how these x values aren't going up by ones, they're going up by fives. What could I do to make sure that I get the constant of variation without making the mistake of looking at going up by fives like here? Like here I'm going up by 20 on the, on the right side. The constant of variation, however, is not 20 because I'm going up by fives on this side. What can I do to find that value? 
What could I do? Yes. Divide 20 by 5. Nicely done. So what we call that, okay, what we call that is essentially taking the y values, the differences in the y, over your difference of the x's. Okay, so in this case, if I take my 20 and I divide by 5, I'm going to have a value of 4. Okay, so just noting where the 20 comes from and noting where the 5 comes from. So we're just taking our differences and dividing them. Okay, the graph is going to be a straight line, just like our direct variation yesterday, but it does not pass through the origin. Okay, so when we look at that table, our graph is going to look something like this, <coughs> unlike yesterday where we were always starting at the origin. Okay, and that, my friends, is all you need for the tasks coming up on that worksheet. Okay, so let's talk about what we're going to have you work on for some practice, and we'll talk about what we'll do on Monday.